Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to TBR Cluedo! If you're new here, this is my TBR game that I play every single month where we have different rooms for different genres and then prompts, so I have to read a book that is that genre and that prompt, you'll get it as we go along. July was one of my worst reading months ever in existence. I think I only read five books. <laughs> I think I have to leave. And so I want to have a really good reading month in August, but the problem with TBR Cluedo for August is I still don't know a lot of the books I'm going to be reading in August. There's a lot of videos I'm doing where I don't know what I'm going to be reading. <laughs> I haven't found out what I'm going to be reading yet because I'm either finding out in the course of the video, or there's one video which I'm going to talk about later, which I'm finding out on Friday what I'm going to be reading. So it's a bit tricky for TBR Cluedo because I can't fit books to the prompts, but we're going to try our best. The books I do know I have to read, we've got a lot of fantasy and sci-fi, but that goes into the fantasy because I don't have a sci-fi room. So, shall we just begin with August's TV Arclay Day? I'm not feeling <laughs> the best about my reading, about my chances, about how kind TV Arclay may be to me, but let's, let's just go ahead and see, shall we? Okay, time for roll number one, person number three, which is red up here in historical. I may use it to get somewhere else, because as we know, I've got a lot of <laughs> fantasy I need to read this month. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a one and a five. One, two, Three, oh shit, <laughs> I need to drop it, oh no. So three, four, five, six. That works perfectly. That is number 20, which is a five star prediction. So roll number one was a fantasy that is a five star prediction. And although I have a lot of fantasy <laughs> that I want to try and read and want to try and get a lot of fantasy roles this month in TV Cluedo, I couldn't in good faith really predict many of them as five star predictions. Either they're really short and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I give five stars to novellas or like short stories that often, or um, they're just like all unknown authors or series that I tend to give four stars, but not five stars. So I couldn't really in good faith uh, <laughs> get any of these for this prompt, which kind of sucks. Cause I was like, yay, fantasy prompt. And I was like, oh. Can't actually use any of the books I need to read. So this is the one I gave to my patrons for our book club poll. My patrons get to vote on one round of TBR Cluedo every month, and that ends up being our book club pick for the month. Something very exciting, by the way, guys, is I've managed to change my Patreon so that you get charged rather than the first of every month like it used to be. So like if you're joining on the 20th, you'd pay on the 20th and then pay again on the first. Now you pay every month on the day you join. So if you join on the 18th, you pay every month on the 18th. So it's a lot better for you guys. So if you want to go check the Patreon out down below, you can, you may want to when you see what our book club pick is this month. So the choices that I gave my patrons were Unraveler by Frances Harding, The Familiar by Lee Bardugo, The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett, and Starling House by Alexi Harrow. And guys, we had a tie. <laughs> We had a tie. Both on 35% of the vote, we have The Familiar and The Tainted Cup. Equal, equal votage. And I think we've had a tie once before and usually what I do is I have the casting vote because I don't vote when the poll's live so then I get to vote if there's a tie. I can't. I can't make this decision, please, I can't make this decision. And the one that I chose, basically completely on a whim, because I'm so excited to read both of these, hence them being five star predictions, but I did choose The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. So this is our book club pick for the month. If you wanna come join us, there'll be a discussion live show, there's discussion sections on the Discord, there'll be a reading vlog for it exclusively on the Patreon. I'm so excited for this one. So this is Lee Bardugo's new release this year. And it basically is set during the Spanish Inquisition, I believe, and a ghost Girl who's hired to like use magic but then people are hunting down magicians and want to burn them and it's secretive and I'm just so excited because I love anything that is outside of the Grishaverse nowadays that Lee does. Yup, 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 yup. I have a controversial opinion, I've spoken about this before, I think she should axe the Grishaverse. Give us one more book, give us like a book to wrap it all up, like a Six of Crows 3, wrap it up, and then I think we should be done. I don't think we should fuck around with the Grishaverse anymore because Rule of Wolves, if you don't know, is the sequel to King of Scars, which are the two latest in the Grishaverse. I just think it's getting a bit convoluted. And I didn't like how the Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows stories have now merged because I like to keep them separate because I like one series and don't like the other. I just think Grishaverse should be done. And I think she should be writing adult stuff now. And of up to date, the only adult stuff she's written is the Ninth House series. So this is her first book that I think is meant to be a standalone. I don't think this is meant to turn into a series. And um, a 
really interesting different route for her. I'm so excited for this. I love Lee. You know, I have good luck with a lot of Lee stuff. Like I really love the Night House series. I really love Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it could be a really interesting one to discuss. I think the Spanish setting is a really interesting choice for her. I think she said that she has some kind of like familial lineage and connection to this time period in Spain. That could be incorrect. I'm not putting words in her mouth, but I, f I feel like I remember her speaking about that in an interview. So I'm just super excited for her historical from her. I just think, oh Lee, the world of possibilities that you have when you don't write Christian Beth. <laughs> Christian Beth was good about last year, but I think like, you know how like Marvel, I mean obviously the new Marvel, this is, this is, a, this is I'm thinking about this because I just watched a podcast about this. What does that have to do with anything, bitch? But you know how Marvel, obviously the new Wolverine and Deadpool <laughs> movie is like, you know, doing very well. But for the most part, people are fed up with Marvel, right? It's been going on for so long with so many films, everyone's like got fatigue about Marvel. I don't want us to have that about the Grishaverse. Let's just like, leave it a success, you know? Let's not let it die a slow death. So anyways, I don't know why I'm talking about the Grishaverse so much, but I am really excited to read this one and see something different from her and her writing. I think her writing could suit this historical setting very, very well. So if you want to read this with us, if you want to have some friends to read this with, if you want to join me on the discussion live show, you can join the Patreon down below and you'll only be charged on this day every month, which I think is way better for you guys. I'm so happy I've finally been able to make that change. Roll number two. Person number eight, which is blue in contemporary. Oh, can we get the rose pumped? One and three, perfect. One, oh wait, no, hang on. <laughs> One, two, three, four, there we go. And that is the rose prompt, which means a Patreon is going to pick what I read. Roll number two was the rose prompt, which means I have to pick a book that one of my patrons has chosen. I know this is a lot of patron stuff, guys. <laughs> There's no more Patreon stuff in the rest of this video. They've just been, you know, concentrated to the start of the video. So um, yeah, another thing when you join my Patreon, you get to pick two books off of my own TBR that you would like me to read and they go into this pot and we pick one out when there's a rose prompt and we read it. So I feel like I can trust my patrons. I feel like they make quite good choices. So let's see, I'm gonna get one a little bit of the ways down. Okay, I've got one. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. I hope that's in focus. What is that? The girl who fell beneath the sea. I did not see myself reading that anytime soon, if I'm entirely honest with you. Let's see who picked it and then we will find it on our shelves. So we've only got one person who picked it. It's so crazy when we get one, like a book that only one person has picked because there's so many books on here that like 20 people have picked. But Olivia, Olivia picked The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. Let me, I don't know where that is. Let me try and find it. It's too hot for this. Approximately 10 hours later. Okay, I found it. I checked it down. We've got The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. I have this beautiful fairy loot edition. This has been on my TBR for quite a while, but I love, <gasps> look how gorgeous those end pages are. And oh my God, it's so beautiful. Very stunning. Absolutely stunning. You look stunning, darling. So stunning. Absolutely stunning. This is about this island where deadly storms rage every year and they believe that the sea god is the one enacting these storms. And every year the island uh, throws a maiden into the sea as like a sacrifice. And many believe that the protagonist's brother's beloved is the true, legendary true bride, but he jumps in with her when she's supposed to be sacrificed. And our protagonist throws herself into the water too and gets swept away in this like magical city of gods. I've heard really good things about this one. It's one that I've been meaning to get to for so long. I think it's the kind of lyrical, magical, beautiful writing that I would enjoy. I just love the cover. I, I've heard really, really good things. So I'm excited to be finally made to get to this one. I've heard wonderful things. And again, I just love this edition so much. And just like reading a lovely edition, just adds something to the reading experience, doesn't it? It just makes me extra happy. I was reading in the vlog that's coming this weekend, I, there's an edition of a book that I just love. And I didn't even really love the book, but I just had so much fun reading it because I love the edition. So anyways, I'm super excited for this one. Glad that I've finally been made to get around to it. Roll number three, person number one, which is green. Oh my God, yes, this is going so well. <laughs> green in fantasy. Let's see how many we roll. Got four or a one? What book in there can I get to with a four and a one? I am gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That is number 11. What is that? Oh, a book with plants or an animal on the cover. Okie dokie. <laughs> Role number three was a fantasy with plants or animals on the cover, and I have chosen one with some animals and little creatures on it, and that is Goblins and Great Coats by Travis Bowdry. This is a short story. It's like 11 pages, but I'm reading it this month. 
<laughs> and it fit the prompt. It, this is a difficult prompt. This is a hard prompt and it fit the prompt. So we're going with it. Um, I don't really know what this is about. I think it's a murder mystery. I think it's like a fantastical murder mystery. It's got a little horsey on the cover and other creatures. It's Travis Bowdry and I love Travis Bowdry, so I'm reading it. And I've been told it's a murder mystery. Is this one a murder mystery or is it his next book that's a murder mystery? Someone's told me he's writing a murder mystery. It might not be this one. I don't really want to know. I don't want to look up the synopsis because it's 11 fucking pages, but I guess I will. <laughs> oh no, this is a locked room mystery. Okay, it can only be solved by a detective. Her eyes are keen, her teeth are sharp. She's a little goblin. She's a little goblin and she's solving a mystery. That's all I really want to know going into this. It's not very, very much not long. Um, but I love Travis Bowdry, as you guys know. I love Legends and Lattes and I love Bookshops and Bone Dust and the idea of just a little short story from him fills me with such joy and excitement. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. This is free. This is like a free ebook to download. So I really recommend go checking it out. Someone, one of my patrons alerted me to this. So I just had to, I had to go read it. So I don't have much to tell you, but I am going to be reading a Travis Bowdry this month. And I'm excited to see how he does a short story. I think it could be really good. Roll number four, person number five, which is white over a nonfiction. Do I, oh, I do have some nonfiction I could read this month. Let's see what we get. We've got a two and a four. Okay, both of them are two away, so I am just gonna go one, two. That is number 17, which would help if I had the prompts open. Number 17 is, oh, a book with multiple audiobook narrators. I might have something that works for that. Role number four was a non-fiction that has multiple audiobook narrators. This is one of my least favorite prompts because it's tricky. It's actually hard to find, but I knew I actually had, when I got the role, I knew I had a non-fiction that would be likely to have multiple audiobook narrators. And although this doesn't have as many as I thought it would, it does have three, according to Audible. And I am going to be reading Not That Bad Dispatches from Rape Culture, edited by Roxanne Gay. So this is an anthology from many different women, essays, essays from many different women, talking about rape culture, addresses what it means to live in a world where women have to measure the harassment, violence, and aggression they face, and where they are routinely second-guessed, blown off, discredited, many other words <laughs> for speaking out. You know, I think this is an incredibly important book. It's one I've been meaning to get to for ages. I loved Roxane Gay's uh, non-fiction Bad Feminist, and although this isn't written by her, it's just edited by her, I just think she takes such care and thought and approaches everything with such thoughtfulness that I want to say I'm looking forward to this because I think it's going to be a pretty difficult and harrowing read, but I'm guessing it's going to be the kind of book that I think is really important for everyone to read and um, really important for everyone to understand the experiences of each other. So yeah, I'm going to be reading this soon actually. I'm going to start reading it this week and I just think, I don't know, I'm getting feelings from this book that it could be a five star, which <laughs> for the video that it's for, uh, isn't necessarily the best thing, <laughs> but I'm just getting the feeling that this is going to be an incredibly important read. Now it could not be a five star because anthologies are really hard to get a five star because like you have to love every single short story and that's really hard or, sh or short essay and that's really really hard but I don't know I'm just getting a feeling about this one and I think it's going to be incredibly important and I really you know, although this is only edited by Roxane Gay I really want to get into reading all of Roxane Gay's non-fiction because Bad Feminist was just like you know being like run over by a train with like incredibleness <laughs> so yeah I, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to this one but I think it's going to be a very important read. Raw number five Person number seven, which is brown, up here in mystery. Let's see how many we roll. We got a three and a three. Okay, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That is number eight, which is a book with over 12,000 ratings on Goodreads. Role number four was a mystery with over 12,000 ratings on Goodreads, and I do not have any mysteries planned this month, but, I mentioned that video to you guys, which I'm finding out on Friday what I'm gonna be reading for. And I'm making an educated guess that I think they're gonna pick this book. I'm not gonna tell you who's picking, it's for Year of Rex, I'll tell you that. But um, based on what I think I'm gonna say, based on how I'm gonna describe my reading taste and based on what they would think of, I think I might read this, be reading this book. And if I'm not, I will be reading it before the end of the year because I think it's going to be in the Goodreads mystery thriller category. So if we're looking at TBR Cluedo as like a year long, <laughs> like I have to read the books because I do want to read every TBR Cluedo book by the end of the year. That is a goal I'm trying to achieve. At the moment, I've only got four I haven't read. So I just have a feeling they're going to pick it. And this is the closest out of all the videos that I'm doing this month that I don't know why I'm reading. This is the only educated guess I can make. So I'm making it. 
if I'm right, it's like, the, but if I'm right, it's just like understanding what I'm gonna say about my reading taste, understanding this is something they'll probably think of first. But I am choosing The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. I could not be reading it this month, I could just be reading it later in the year. <laughs> The rules don't apply. But it will be read this year regardless. I've given you this synopsis 10,000 times. It's the best synopsis in the world. If you haven't heard of it, oh my God, how can I distill this down? There's an island, a fog has killed everyone else off in the rest of the world, but this island is protected. But then a scientist is murdered on the island and it triggers a lowering of the system that protects them from this fog. So they've only got like a hundred and something hours to figure out who murdered them. But the security system has also wiped the memory of everyone on the island. So someone is a murderer and Johnny doesn't even know it. That's what it is. It's going to be a crazy murder mystery. I'm so excited. I love how Stuart Turton really pushes the boundaries of the genre. Comes up with such imaginative ideas. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. I didn't love The Seven Husbands. No, The Seven Deaths. <laughs> of Evelyn Hardcastle. I did love The Devil and Darkwater. I gave that five stars. So, you know, I know that his books can go either way. I know his endings are usually batshit crazy. Like, the endings of both of his previous books are just like, what is going on? Like, what? He has big ideas and sometimes they don't stick landing, but I love him. I love him for doing the big ideas. So I've been kind of dreading reading this. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I don't really want to read it. I, I feel like it's one of those books that there's so much pressure around that I'm like, how could I ever how could it ever live up to my my idea of what I want it to be? But I think I also need to remember, you know, he doesn't always stick the landing and that's okay, but I love, I love him for trying, you know? So I could be reading it this month. I have a feeling, I can't, I just, this is a gut feeling. I couldn't tell you what else I think they're gonna pick, but just based on my, how I describe my taste, particularly when it comes to murder mysteries, about, about something that like, you know, twist the genre, comes up with imaginative ideas of how to like reimagine the genre. I just feel like they could pick it, so. It was, you know, I wouldn't have put this on here otherwise, but I was forced to by the prompt because I had no other mysteries over 12,000 ratings that I was planning on reading anytime soon. And then our final roll is person number six, which is yellow over here in magical realism. Let's see how many we roll. Oh, bloody hell, we got a one and a three. <laughs> okay, I don't know, can I get to any other than this one with it? I can just go one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. That is number 21, which is a TBR veteran. And then our final role was a magical realism that is a TBR veteran. And I have gone with Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. I have been meaning to read this forever. I mean, obviously it's a TBR veteran. So I've had it since like 2020, 2021. This is about a young indigenous girl in the 1970s, but she becomes pregnant. I remember, I think it's like somewhere between fiction and memoir, this book. And I just remember hearing people read it like years and years ago in like 2020 and just saying how incredible it is. I remember Kayla read it. I just remember hearing wonderful things about this. Also, I also remember hearing I should read the audiobook because I think the writer um, voices the audiobook but it's like poetry almost it's like a mix between fiction and non-fiction a mix between poetry and prose I've heard wonderful things about this when it came out I haven't really heard a lot of people read it since then but I'm really really looking forward to seeing what I think of this and getting a chance to read it because I think it again could be a super important impactful book. I just feel like I'm feeling, guys, I'm sucked to feel, oh, doing a TV video always makes me feel good about reading again. <laughs> I've had a terrible reading month in July and I feel like I'm starting to like, oh God, isn't reading so much fun? Anyways, yeah, I think this is gonna be heartbreaking, difficult, emotional, but I'm really looking forward to picking it up. So there we have it, everyone. That is my August TBR. Again, a little bit of a mess because I don't know a lot of what I'm gonna be reading in August. Um, again, we've made an educated guess to the last night in the world. I will be reading it in November if I don't read it in August. But um, that isn't even that far away, God. 2020, I just kind of want 2020, 2024 to be over. It's been a bad year for me. <laughs> a bad year I want it over already um anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video let me know what's on your August TBR I'd love to know some of the books you're hoping to get to this month and I'll see you very soon in another video bye